What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. This story's called, Entitled Mother Accuses Me of Being Transgender Before Attempting to Poison Her Son. Been lurking here for a while and finally decided to post this story. Just a heads up, it was a few months ago so I'll be paraphrasing and I'm on mobile so sorry I'm messing up my uh, ob <laughs> obligatory background information about me and the setting. I'm a roughly 6 foot tall man who had a condition called gynecomastia when this occurred. Essentially, I had an abnormally large growth of breast tissue beneath beneath my right nipple. I've since had surgery to have this growth removed, but this was about a week or two before the surgery. Also, I never skip leg day, and the uniform for Chick-fil-A consists of very tight black pants. Fun. So I work in the dining room at a Chick-fil-A. I started to finance a trip I wanted to take, and the job and pay were good, so I stuck with it. This particular Saturday evening, I was working a 5 to 10 shift. It was pretty packed since there was a big football game that night for the local high High school. Lots of parents and teens about my age were coming in and out in huge groups. Around 7.45, most of the kids had gone to the game and it had mostly slowed down. The drive through was still packed, but inside everything was good. Until a kid threw up in the playground tube slide. No, this was not the entitled parents kid. Both this kid and his parents were very nice and cooperative. So, as one of the three dining room workers on that night, me and one of my coworkers grabbed a huge package of body fluid cleanup kits and headed into the nearly airtight playground. We evacuated all the kids out through the other entrance and started cleaning up the puke. The third held down the fort outside the play area, which we clearly marked with signs stating that it was closed for cleaning. Me and my coworker were chatting about life and school while we cleaned, and we had gotten pretty much everything solid out of the slide by about 8.30, which is when she had to clock out. At this point, this entitled parent came into the restaurant with two kids no more than six or seven years old. You know how this goes. Here's the cast. Uh, me. Well, duh, it's me, OP. Entitled mom. Kid one. Kid two. Dining room manager. Basically, the manager of the dining room. The kids made a beeline for the glass playland door and pulled it open, ignoring the sign clearly stating it was closed. Hey, guys, uh, you can't be in here. A kid got sick in here a while ago and I have to clean all this. Kid one laughed at me and started to run for the part where he could climb up into the tubes that connected into the slide. But I stood in the way so he couldn't get in. Kid 2 started to go for the slide but stopped dead in his tracks when he saw the cleaning pads covering the entire bottom of the slide. But we wanna play! Again paraphrasing. Sorry pal, but I've gotta clean this whole thing. No one can play in here tonight. Both Kid 1 and Kid 2 slowly walked out the entrance after that and went over to the lady they came with, looking more angry than sad. I felt a little bad, but I didn't really think much of it, so I put my headphones in and went back to wiping down the whole structure of the tubes, inside and out, which is something that whoever cleans the play area has to do every night. While the chemicals my coworker and I had sprayed on the slide soaked into the cleaning kit pads. I was pretty relaxed by this point and had my favorite song on, so hearing the door open again several minutes later didn't surprise me too much. I figured it was my coworker who had forgotten her phone or maybe a kid had left a shoe in the playground. Boy was I wrong. Entitled mother came storming into the play area, flanked by kid one and kid two, her table marker still in hand. We give them to customers who dine in the restaurant, so she probably had come straight after ordering, in hindsight. What do you think you're doing? I paused my song and took my headphones out and wrapped them around my neck since I didn't think this would be a long discussion. Uh, I'm cleaning the play area. A kid threw up in the slide earlier, so I'm just cleaning the rest while the chemicals set in, ma'am. Well, you'll have to do it later. My son and his friend want to play in here now. They won't mess it up. Now, I should point this out. The playland being airtight meant the chemical smell was very strong inside the playground tubes that kids crawl in, and I had to wear a mask when I was up there cleaning to prevent myself from choking. And I'm 17, going on 18. God knows what could happen to little kids. It's not gonna happen. 
Playland is closed, ma'am. At this point, I stood up from the toy steering wheel that I had been wiping down and faced Entitled Mother. She took one look at me and repulsed. I'm not gonna be told what to do by you! You can't even accept your own gender! I was a little caught off guard by this because even though I'm not transgender, I am bisexual and I'm very secretive about it. It took me a second to realize she was looking at my chest and my hips and determining that I was trans. Miss, I'm not. You're not what? I have a skin condition. I'm having surgery for it. Entitled Mother looked appalled by this. And you're gonna mutilate yourself. I snapped a little at this. I had been cleaning up a kid's puke for half an hour, and I had surgery in a week, so I think it was a little justified. Ma'am, leave Playland, now. I don't think this would have worked if I wasn't two inches taller than her and about 20 pounds heavier. She screeched at me that she'd be speaking to my manager and stormed out of the playground practically dragging a terrified Kid 1 and Kid 2 behind her. Fortunately, the playground being airtight also holds in a lot of sound. Even though there's a glass window between the playground and the dining room, most of the guests were sitting on the other side of the restaurant. About five minutes of cleaning and another use of cleaning spray later, Dangerous Radish, or dining room manager, or manager, came in and asked me what happened. I told her that someone came in and I told them to leave, but I didn't do anything besides raise my voice. She smiled and briefly told me about how the woman claimed I hurled slurs at her and her children, but she knew me better than that. I thanked her for having my back and went back to work wiping the glass windows down. I wish I could say that was the end of it, but it isn't. Entitled Mother, Kid 1, and Kid 2 took a table that gave them a perfect view of the playground through the glass window, despite one of my co-workers in front of house, cash register peeps, asking them to sit on the other side so they could clean the floors near the playground. Ground. Eventually, I had cleaned the slide, so I picked up the garbage bags from the body fluid cleanup kits. Those things really have everything you need. 10 out of 10 would clean again. And put all the body fluid kit rags and sanitizer wipes in one, then toss that bag into a bigger bag along with one pair of gloves and tied off that big bag with a new pair. I then took the bag to the dumpster myself, mostly to get a breath of fresh air due to how strong the chemicals had gotten inside the play area tubes. I got back about five minutes later to find Entitled Mother eating a chicken sandwich at her table while Kid 1 and Kid 2 were running inside the play area. I ran inside to find Kid 2 coughing inside the tubes while Kid 1 was on the floor yelling something in the slide. I thought Kid 2 was in trouble, so I took my shoes off, grabbed a mask, and climbed into the tubes myself. It took only a second to find Kid 2, since the tubes didn't extend very much, and when I did, I put the mask on him and told him to come with me back down the way he came up, since the slide might still have been dirty. He came quite eagerly. He was a pretty good kid, all in all. I rushed Kid 1 and Kid 2 out of the playground, put my shoes back on, and followed them quickly. Entitled Mother let me have it at that point. Heavily paraphrased, she said, How can you interrupt them? They're just kids having fun, you devil! Me, completely out of fornication under consent of the kings to give. My pleasure, ma'am. I then went to the back, got a lemonade, and asked manager if she could lock the playland to make sure no one else went in for the night. Usually, we don't do that, but she made an exception this time, much to Entitled Mother's horror. In the end, neither Kid 1 or Kid 2 inhaled too many chemical fumes, and they left pretty happy from what I could tell. Entitled Mother got her number one deluxe with extra pickles, no cheese, and superfood side. I got a donut because the store owner is a god amongst men and brought in donuts from a local bakery as a reward for us doing so well that night. At the end of the year, this incident was in November, but still this was a bonus, the store did so well financially that we hit symbol of success, which means our sales went up 18% in the last year. I've got a few more Entitled Parents Karen stories. Uh, Chick-fil-A's religious attachments tend to draw quite a few Karens, so if you'd like to hear them, let me know. This one just struck me as odd, since I'd never seen someone so entitled to a playground before, even when everyone else respected it was closed. You know what I would have done? I would have told her, hey, if you want your kids to be in there, why don't you just go sit in there for about 15 minutes, and if you can, we'll open it. If not, then, uh, well, you'll see why we can't. Because you'll be choking and dying as you should. I'm kidding. That's a bit harsh, but... So are those chemical fumes, especially for little kids, the dummy. 
This story's called, Entitled Mother Goes Off Because My Wife, 25, Female, and I, 30, Male, Spend Our Own Money on Things We Need. Hey guys, first time poster here. A bit of background, I moved out of home when I was 18. I am now 30 and married, living with my wife. Since I left home 12 years ago, I have worked full time, including 10 years service in the military. I am completely independent from my parents and have been the entire time. I've never relied on or ask them for anything. I have two sisters who still live at home. They both work casual and study. They are both shocking with money, constantly going overseas on holidays or to concerts and festivals with friends, just blowing every cent they earn. Their choice though, good on them. Me, I've been on one overseas holiday for my honeymoon, but that's it. I save money every week and always have. I have fun too, I just make sure that if I can help it, I don't go backwards. Yet, for some reason, Entitled Mother is always on my back about money. Not my sisters, just me. Whenever I spend anything, it's a big deal. She also has this big thing about my wife not earning enough. She works full-time and makes a decent salary, just not quite what mine is. It doesn't matter. We're a team and my wife is amazing. She does a lot for us in so many other aspects of our life. Sounds like an excuse. <laughs> I'm kidding. Entitled Mother is always saying that my wife is just just playing me for my money and one of these days she will even take half which she apparently hasn't earned. Well, that's all BS. My wife and I have a great marriage. She's an amazing woman and even if she did become unhappy and want to leave, she would absolutely deserve half as income is only a small part of what someone brings to a marriage and my wife is an absolute star. Honestly, I think it just makes Entitled Mother mad that we don't need her. So anyway, the story. Recently, there was a large hailstorm in my city. There was widespread damage. Thousands of vehicles were destroyed, including my wife's car. Luckily, the car was insured, and after a couple of weeks, we received a decent payout. Although my wife loved her car, we did see this as a bit of a blessing in disguise, as we had an old personal loan outstanding as well as a credit card with a little owing also. The plan was to completely pay off both of these, close the accounts, and with what was left, to buy my wife a car. Then, if there was still some left, we could put some extra cash against our home loan. Yes, I know it sounds like we are drowning in debt. I assure you we are not. Our situation is very manageable. We make all payments on time and still manage to put something away every week for ourselves. So anyway, this was all a few weeks back and since then we have done all of the above as planned. We are extremely happy as we have wiped a lot of debt. Everything except the home loan. And my wife loves her new car despite it being a bit of a downgrade. Since all of this occurred, I had not heard from Entitled Mother. My parents are retired and traveling the country in a caravan, so I'm not bothered by this. Yesterday, I decided to call and check in. Things are normal at first, conversation is pleasant, but I can tell Entitled Mother has something on her mind, so I ask if something's wrong. The floodgates are open. She's been holding this in for weeks. I paraphrase, but here's how it went down. I'll tell you what's wrong. Your wife's spending $35,000 Australian dollars on a car when you have a home loan to think about. Your wife is manipulative and selfish and you are a gutless pushover. She will send you broke and your father and I won't be there to pick up the pieces. Whoa, what the hell? Okay, first of all, why on earth do you think we spent that on a car? Where would you have even plucked that number from? Reminder, I haven't spoken to Entitled Mother in weeks. As far as I knew, she had no idea we had bought the car yet. Your sister showed me your wife's Snapchat story. There was a photo of the car with the price in the window, so don't freaking lie to me. Well, that photo was taken before we even spoke with a dealer. The price in the window was 32000 not 35000 and that was the original price. There was a sale on dropping at $6,000, and I was able to talk them down further $3,000. On top of all that, my mother-in-law gave my wife some of her nan's inheritance to go towards it. Entitled mother, casually moving past the part where she was wrong and uh, cruel for no reason, Well then tell me what you paid for it. You know what? No, I don't owe you an explanation, and after the way you just attacked me, you won't get one. 
If you wanted to know, maybe you should have called and asked how we were going with the car situation at some point over the last few weeks, but I haven't heard from you and our finances are none of your business anyway. Entitled mother hangs up. I haven't heard a thing from her in days now and don't expect to for a while. Spoke to my dad and his advice is, don't poke the bear, makes me laugh. Apparently my wife is manipulative and I am a pushover. Yeah, sure. Might be time to go no contact for a bit. Ooh, I hate people that do that. I mean, obviously, as parents, you want to make sure your kids are being responsible, but at some point, you gotta, you gotta step off. They're an adult, and they, they're responsible for their own finances. If they want to blow it all on something stupid, the only reason they're gonna learn to not do that is to learn to not do that by doing that and really realizing how stupid it is to blow your money on stuff you don't need. I went through that phase, <laughs> um, and then I had a bunch of revelations. Uh, like, basically, your satisfaction with the stuff you buy sort of dilutes with the more stuff you have, to the point where you're not, you're not really feeling any joy towards I sound like Coco Chanel <laughs> you're not feeling any joy towards uh, your individual possessions so at some point you got to really cut back on what you buy and try to get rid of the old stuff so that what you do have you appreciate all the more all the, the more more <laughs> I don't know don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode